Welcome to Below the 49th, the personal perspective of my neighbor to the south, Below the 49th. I'm Michael A. Charbon. Dateline today is July 27th, 2020. Today's title, Vigilante Aftermath, A Democracy Under Siege. Today, America stands in smoldering ashes as city centers and a populace are traumatized. Businesses smashed, along with the dreams of hardworking people, as vigilantes attempt to destroy a democracy. They defaced federal buildings, now fenced off to protect them against nightly vandalism. Federal structures that were built to support the freedom and rights of a great nation, created to serve the public and their democracy. These images of uncontrollable riots are broadcast around the world. Imagine what people are seeing. They depict America in peril. Images that formerly were of war-torn revolutions, of third world countries, uh, challenged by tyrants and rogue regimes of suppressive dictatorships. These are not the pictures of what America stands for and so many fought and died for. These are not the images of the American dream, home of the free, or a society with the promise of freedom of speech or the world's defender of democracy and freedom. Very depressing. Americans are empowered through the Constitution with the right to demonstrate, to physically walk and speak and freely express their views without fear of retribution or forceful suppression. The right to peacefully, that's peacefully, challenge and vocalize disagreement with their government in print or on TV or on the streets, powered by a free and open election and a vibrant economy with a system that rewards innovation, entrepreneurialism, hard work, education, risk and investment are all elements of the American dream. A dream that also promises a safe, free and civil society where people adhere to the rule of common law and order that protects all equally. These are the precious elements unique to the American Constitution and considered indelible rights. But today, those promises are being challenged. They're being challenged by a mob that uses force, vandalism, destruction, and lawlessness, all guised under the banner of change and social justice. The saying goes, give them a finger and they will eventually take the whole hand, rings true, unfortunately, in this instance. Beginning in Minneapolis, where a police precinct was abandoned to the mob to be burned and destroyed, along with looting and civil disobedience, all in the name of social justice, represents the index finger of a mob to American cities. It was the first failure to take a stand, and as a result, fueled painful path of national destruction. To set a, pre a precedent uh, that basically empowered the mob, it, it taught them that they can rule and have their way with force and intimidation and violence. The mob gave law enforcement and government the middle finger. And as the mob's scourge spread, they eventually took the hand of American cities to the detriment of a whole nation. Today we see 12 cities burning each night with the mob destruction and vandalism. I mean, let's be clear, nowhere in the Constitution does it say destruction, looting, shooting, and setting a building on fire is a civil right. Nowhere is it implied that law enforcement officers can be shot at and killed in an effort to destroy America's faith in democracy. Sadly, selective, spineless civic leaders are fearful of the mob and sadly don't even support their own law enforcement. They stand silent, calling for defunding of the police as their city burns. Complicit in the damage as they demand police to stand down, I mean, ironic how two city mayors, ravaged by nightly destruction, suddenly see the mob in front of their house, challenging their home and their personal dwelling, standing on their street, while private security teams whisk them away to safety and dispense the unruly crowd. Hmm. Why didn't these mayors instruct law enforcement to stand down for them and allow the peaceful demonstrators to have their will? I mean. Why not come in and see how the rich, privileged mayor lives? You know, take your shoes off, we just did the floors. Really? Did that happen? I mean, come on, not even close. You know, consider what these two mayors did to the inner cities, those independent businesses and those residents. You know what they did? They abandoned them. Spineless isn't even close to an appropriate term. 
This, well, they diminish legal recourse to detain and arrest thugs. And, you know, those who break the law, all the fear of intimidating the leaf blower mobs, you know, the leaf blowers to dispense the gas, where inner cities see nightly frozen water bottles, bricks, explosions, uh, commercial grade fireworks, mini mortars, and lasers attack police who bravely stand. You know, sworn to protect society, businesses, and the innocent. Where those who stand on the blue line are killed, injured and maimed as a result of defending America's democracy, all in cities who neglect to defend law enforcement or even fund them. I wanted to say something else. These are the true present day patriots. America then descends further into uncharted territory when, federal, when the federal government are forced to step in to restore law and order in selective cities. To protect critical infrastructure and federal municipal buildings, they are using the Federal Protective Services, a legitimate branch of the federal government. Then repugnant elected pol politicians describe these law enforcement officers as the Gestapo and stormtroopers. Like, these are epithets of disgusting unworthiness of true patriots of democracy. But these words out of the mouths of elected officials really illustrate just how far and how so many in the streets and in government have severely lost their way. Is America's respect for law and order no, all, no longer a reality? Have Americans accepted the fact that marauding bands of vigilantes can indiscriminately burn and destroy federal infrastructure, civic buildings, you know, and rule the streets unchallenged? That would be a definite no, and particularly from this administration, at least in particular cities and states. So what's to come next? What is going to happen? Uh, you know, uh, well, the federal government and the National Guard has now stated that they won't come into a city unless requested by an elected official. So, to those cities who tolerate the mob, remain inactive, watching the nightly destruction of their infrastructure in city centers, when all's done, ruined and ravaged and left destroyed, that city and that state will bear the singular the cost and the effects of a broken infrastructure, deplorable service, and the inability to attract new business or even hold its citizens. Think about that. You know, when the federal government will say, told you so. These destroyed cities will experience the unfortunate Detroit factor as their population leaves and takes with them their tax base, the businesses, and those workers who power that city. I mean, why would you stay in a city where the taxes are going to jump so high for the repairs, uh, crippling businesses and decapitating your, your paycheck? America will move to a state in a city where they know the precious investment of their business will be protected and strongly defended and respected. Where a mayor will stand up against the mob and respect the rule of law because the city will protect their family, their business, and the infrastructure that they depend on to work, prosper, and grow the elements of the American dream. Today, with the silent majority apprehensive to speak loudly of their political convictions for fear of being yelled down and accused of the faults of the world, they will have the last word as they will vote with their feet and with an X in November. You know, there's a saying that to every yin, there's a yang, you know, yin and yang. Well, the yin of liberal utopian society without respect for rule of law, with an autonomous zone, you know, run by gangs and thugs like Chop and Chaz, is not a base to promote prosperity and freedom. The yang, it's going to be harsh. It's going to be quick, as Americans will protect themselves and their families from the mob. Hardened gated communities, more private armed security, that will all be prevalent. Selective and restricted access to particular restaurants, apartment buildings and office buildings, all reactionary and all perpetuating a greater divide before the, you know, between the haves and the have-nots. Nots. Utopia will have failed and the chickens of reality will come home to roost. Elon Musk moving uh, Tesla to Texas is but the canary in the coal mine. And November 2020 will be a defining moment. Finally, to my uh, American Facebook viewers, uh, thank you for all your posts. You may not be able to see this as Facebook prevents selective below the 49th posts from being promoted to U.S. Facebook viewers and media outlets. See, Facebook exerts indiscriminate censorship as I have no U.S. address. Facebook arbitrarily decides to censor several posts and not allow me to promote them 
to viewers in the United States in fear of me influencing the coming election. Wow. <laughs> well, if you decide that an American might appreciate this or be interested in this, uh, please subscribe and post it on. Uh, I would appreciate it if you like and share. I try to address every comment uh, as well that you're posted. I appreciate those considerations. And until next time, God bless and stay safe. I'm Michael A. Charbon for Below the 49th.